NPC insists no increase in ex depot price of petrol in March as fuel kills resurface. Minister of State Petroleum Timmy Pre Silva apologizes to Nigerians over the scare, assures no increase in price of petrol. We would look into concerns arising from Bofai 2020, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning tells Nigerians. And on the program today, demutualization of the Nigeria Stock Exchange is our focus. This and more will be coming your way shortly. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Good to have you join us at this time, and we we'll start with the news that the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Pierre Silva, has denied any purported increase in the pump price of petrol. Addressing a press conference on the sideline of a groundbreaking of a gas cylinder manufacturing facility in Lagos, the minister said neither the president as a substantive minister of petroleum resources nor himself approved any increase in the pump price of petrol. He blamed the purported new price regime of 209.61 to 212.61 naira per liter announced by the PPRA as a mix-up in communication and apologized to Nigerians. The price of petrol to 212 naira per liter, irrespective of the source of that information, I want to assure you that it is completely untrue. Neither Mr. President, who is the Minister of Petroleum Resources, nor myself, who deputized for him, as Minister of State has approved that the pump price of petrol be increased by one naira. I would therefore urge you to disregard this misleading information. While stating that the federal government is not going back on full deregulation of the downstream oil sector, the minister said any change in pump price would only be decided after due consultations with all stakeholders. He therefore called on marketers to maintain status quo and refrain from hoarding or creating artificial scarcity of the product. Moving on, the recurring speculations on the increase in the price of petrol is becoming one too many, with motorists at the receiving end. Lydia Sampson has a situation report. Around petrol pump price moderacy is creating uncertainty in the petroleum downstream sector. A visit to petrol stations in the FCT shows another phase of panic buying with stations in the city centre still selling within the price band. However, with queues building up. No, 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 we are not increasing for now. We are selling 165 per litre now. Right now, you can see the price is 165 naira per litre. Um, and in most places that I've heard as well, it's still maintaining the same... Um, reduced price, not the new price. So there's no need for panic, really. No, See the, the public need reassurance about the possibility and availability of fuel so that people can move into the filling station and buy fuel. The situation is, however, completely different from what we found in most petrol stations in the Guarimpa area of Abuja. The government did not in increase fuel price. I have not seen it on the news that they increased fuel price. So I don't know why the meter is going up and down. When I came, I saw 170, now I'm seeing 165, so I don't know what's happening. You understand? Maybe the meter is doing magic. Government should put her into this spot. I bought it 200 naira now. Inside the filling station. Inside the filling station. This one do? Yes, this one do here. Yeah. Where is this area? 
This is Guarimpa, I think, is, um, third avenue, I guess. Make me feel bad because I woke up this morning only to discover that there's no fuel. What's the reason for the queue? No one can explain. I don't understand. All efforts to get a confirmation or a denial from the Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, proved abortive. For now, however, we are told that the ex depot price remained the same without any increase. NMPC stands by that statement that we are not increasing the uh, ex depot price in the month of March. And that is still the position of things. It has not changed. At the time of filing in this report, NT News gathered that the PPPRA has since deleted the template announcing the alleged increase in pump price from his website. We also ran into a theme from the Department of Petroleum Resources DPR inspecting stations to ensure compliance with the actual running price ban of 161 naira to 166 naira per liter. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Well, we've heard from the horse's mouth. Moving on, the federal government says it will continue to work closely with key financial regulatory institutions to build on already recorded successes and build on all issues arising from the banks and other financial institutions act both year 2020 be addressed promptly. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, who was reacting to some concerns raised by visiting managing director of the NDIC, said citizens need to feel safe in financial transactions, irrespective of the volume involved. The number of institutions that uh, the corporation has liquidated since inception, about uh, 49, is only about 10 DMBs that the corporation was able to pay 100% liquidation dividend. So which means for the remaining ones, it's because the recovery has not been uh, uh, made uh, uh, 100%. I'm aware that, this, that there are issues that arose from the recently amended Banks and Financial um, Institutions Act of year 2020, to which my attention has been drawn. We will work with you and with the board to resolve them. While still talking financial issues, experts have urged the federal government to focus on raising bonds from the capital markets as a means of financing revenue, generating projects while working to reduce balance sheet borrowing. These, among others, were part of the resolutions reached at the Securities and Exchange Commission's yearly budget seminar with the theme Financing Nigeria's Budget and Infrastructure Deficits Through the Capital Market. For the finance of for the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, past experiences have shown that the Nigerian capital market has been quite supportive in providing the necessary funds needed to finance government's needs, adding that it serves as an important channel through which government budget deficits and the economic infrastructure deficits can be financed. Infrastructure deficits can be financed, and government is committed to introducing more of these instruments in partnership with the capital market to finance projects for economic growth. The Nigerian Stock Exchange early this week completed demutualization process after receiving final approvals from the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC. Before we begin the business of the day, let's hear from Oscar Oyema, the CEO of the exchange. The Nigerian capital markets should play a role commensurate with Nigeria's status as Africa's largest economy. At the Nigerian Stock Exchange, we have a vision that the new Nigerian Exchange Group, PLC, will become the premier exchange hub for Nigerian businesses and for the wider African economy. We are implementing a series of measures towards this goal, demutualization being a critical milestone. The completion of demutualization is truly a significant moment and will welcome the new possibilities that have opened up for us today. Now, what does this mean to the investing public and how will it affect the national economy? I have with me Professor Uche Owaliki, a professor of capital market from the Nasara State University, and he will be given insights on the completed demutualization by the Nigerian Stock X 
change. Prof, you're welcome to Business Express. Thank you very much. Well, Prof, before we begin the business of the day, talking about the questions, can we see how the market ended today? Wow. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a red. Yes, 0.13% uh, and um, that's a continuation of what we saw um, the previous week. The previous week the market uh, tanked by 1.18% and um, that decline is also continuing uh, this week. Uh, this week, if you recall, it's just uh, Monday and Wednesday we had a positive um, um, performance appreciation. But all through the week it's been, it's been red. And, um, um, again, it's not surprising. Uh, we should expect that. Recall that January was quite bullish. Uh, the month of February, a lot of investors started, uh, you know, a, a profit taking, and we've seen profit taking and sell and sell pressure, you know, continuing into the month of March. Oh, wow, Prof. With the demutualization now, are we going to expect positive outlook? Well, in the longer term, yes. Um, uh, in terms of um, you know, having more liquidity, you know, in the market. Because that's one thing the mutualization, in my view, is likely to bring about. Um, liquidity in terms of, um, there are characteristics of liquidity, even in terms of debt, uh, okay, number of orders that, that we have. So one thing that the mutualization does, and then by the way, the mutualization is, um, you know, converting the exchange from a member-owned um, uh, organization to now, a company that's limited by shares and which, of course, will start pursuing um, profit. So it's now a. So PA. that's to say from, from non profit to profit to making. Exactly. Now. Uh, so it's now a, a PLC. Uh, recall that um, this coming 60 years, this, in fact, this year marks 60 years exactly. Of the exchange. That, yeah, that yes, exchange I remember. opened this trading. It, it started from Lagos Exchange yes, in to, to in NSE, now the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Yeah, so stock 60 exchange. years down the line, down is the it line. coming late or just on time? No, but the important thing is that um, the exchange has joined the committee of uh, exchanges um, that are now demutualized. It's about the 57th now, uh, if you look at the members of World Federation of Exchanges. So the, what the NSC has done, you know, puts it uh, at number 57th position uh, since the Stockholm Stock Exchange uh, got demutualized in 1993. Um, and as I said, what that means is that it now puts it in a position to be competitive. Uh, you know, so the outside world now sees it in a, a another light, as opposed to a private company or a private club. Now is is a PLC, and of course, you know what the, what comes with a PLC. You know, better corporate governance is expected, and if you expect better corporate governance, you expect a more competitive exchange. You expect a, an exchange that is now um, in a stronger position to upgrade. Okay, by you know upgrading market infrastructure, that will of course. Um, a rub of positively, um, you know, on the part of investors, because one thing it will do is um, if the exchange, for example, um, upgrades to the point where the settlement cycle is reduced from T to three, to say T plus one or just T, of course, it's, it's in the interest um, of investors. And will it also affect trading patterns? And how about regulations? Yes, that's the the fear really um, is uh, the conflict of interest, uh, the the fact that. Um, Regulatory oversight may weaken because, mind you, the exchange has now become a profit-oriented uh, organization. So, if you're a profit-oriented organization, you may not have the 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 the, the spirit to now punish, you know, listed companies that flout the rules because you still need their, you know, you know, their, their, the the monies they pay you by way of listing fees. You know, before now, the exchange can, um, you know, delist, but with um, this kind of um, arrangement. Uh, now a profit-oriented organization, okay? The fear is um, whether regulatory oversight, you know, may suffer. But the exchange has also taken care of that by, you know, breaking up into subsidiaries. Yeah, like up to three. Yes, uh, three subsidiaries. You now have the regulation limited, which is uh, going to be independent of the, you know, of the, uh, the, 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 the exchange itself. There is the exchange, there is the, regu you know, the regulation, and there is the real estate um, company. These subsidiaries, you know, will operate, you know, independently. And I'm, I'm also sure in terms of funding too, they will be in the independent. So the regulation aspect now is standing apart from the exchange. So that is one way the exchange is taking care of the conflict of interest uh, uh, situation that might arise. That might arise. And what other opportunities does this uh, opening bring? 
Yes, no, I, I've talked about, um, you know, uh, being in a position to compete. It also, for the exchange, it also leaves them open to uh, partnerships and collaborations, you know, from uh, mature uh, and more developed uh, exchanges uh, that, that can now come in to pa partner with the exchange. And uh, I also see a lot of uh, more listings taking place, you know, more order flows and more listings, which will, of course, go to deepen. Um, you know the the market, but the full potential. I must add, the full potential of demutualization, you know, can only come when the exchange eventually gets listed. You know, for now, what they have just done is to become a PLC. You know, get approvals from SEC and Co Corporate Affairs Commission, but they have not yet listed to enable you and I buy shares. So, buy you, shares. When, when 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 we get to that point, do you see a lot of Nigerians having the confidence enough to to more like go into buying oh. shares oh, oh, sure. at the NSC? The listings are going to increase, and would that also increase uh, confidence to the investors? Yes, exactly, and that's why I said that the next step we are now expect is, um, you know, the listing. When it gets listed, it becomes a public, it becomes, um, uh, you know, listed public um, liability company. Okay. And I'm, I'm pretty sure when it gets listed, you, you show in, indicate interest in the shares of um, the, the stock exchange. So it becomes truly a public owned um, you know, company. And it will get to a point where, okay, um, trading rights, okay, uh, will be extended to shareholders, uh, investors, 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 such that you, investors. from the comfort of your home, you can even, uh, you know, get shares, you know, just on your mobile phone. Okay, now passing through, without passing through the intermediary. It has happened in, in, in some other uh, jurisdictions. Wow. And that's the, the stage where we are also headed, you know, as far as, um, uh, you know, the uh, capital market is concerned. So I think it's a very positive, um, you know, development. And do you see uh, this development taking the NSC, like, top in Africa, maybe competing with others in the world? Yes, that's, that's one of the... the the, the, the major benefits of um, demutualization. South Africa, of course, um, um, you know, was the first to demutualize in 20, 2015 in, in Africa. Um, but with what the NSA has done now, and given our position as the biggest economy in Africa, okay, with all the potentials, the Nigerian Stock Exchange um, is actually positioned to, you know, um, you know, take its uh, place, uh, not just in, not only in Africa, but even among uh, frontier and emerging. Uh, uh, economies and as you know in terms of market cap and uh, in terms of a uh, number of listed companies we are still you know far below South Africa for example but I see this development opening a lot of doors you know for more companies uh, you know to come in I expect to see uh, more cross-border um, you know listings in favor of um, the Nigerian Stock Exchange and as I also said earlier on as I also expect to see more uh, partnerships and collaborations with other stock exchanges that will favor not just the uh, platforms, um, the exchange, but also even investors, um, you know, in the market. So the exchange so, will become more. By the time I confirm, I confirm that you join the listing list, yes. I'm going to join too. Uh, oh yes, uh, yes. Thank you so very much, Prof, yeah, for sharing you. your you. thoughts with us thank at this you. particular time. Thank you so much. Well, you. moving on, European stocks wobble as Nasdaq 100 futures dropped. Let's join in Nekaoko for a look at a global stock market. Asia-Pacific markets drifted higher Friday, taking cues from Wall Street where U.S. stocks climbed to record highs overnight. The Nikkei 225 in Japan rose 1.73% to close at 29,717.83. The Shanghai Composite finished up 0.47%, while Hong Kong's Hansing Index fell 2.20% in late afternoon trade. European markets retreated slightly on Friday. Germany DAX depreciated by 0.64%, London FTSE 0.32%, while CAC 40 of France dropped 0.18%. Meanwhile, U.S. stocks climbed to record highs during Thursday's regular session as a rebound in tech share resumed and Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief package became low. The Dow Jones Industrial Average finished up 188.57 points after rallying more than 300 points earlier in the session to an intraday record. But while the S&P 500 clinched a new closing record, the Nasdaq Composite posted the best day with a climb of 2.5%. And in Africa, most stocks traded on a positive territory 
with the exception of South Africa JSE Africa Top 40, which fell 1.28%. Neka Oko, Business Express. Abia State Governor Okeze Ikeazu says Abia State is ready to partner foreign investors willing to take advantage of huge investment opportunities that abound in the state. The governor was speaking when he received the French ambassador to Nigeria, Jerome Pasquia, who paid him a visit. Kingsley Anuniwu has the details. Governor Okay, Zé Ibazu, who said Abia State is open for foreign investors, made it known to the visiting French ambassador that the state is in dire need of French manufacturing companies to tap into Enyimba Economic City project. He also appealed for French partnership with the state government in the area of technical education and agriculture in order to enable the state produce skilled students that can be creative and innovative. I've been able to create an economic that is a flagship economic venture of this state since 2015. It has been presented by the federal government and the federal government in the Uyimba economic zone. He later presented the French ambassador with a locally made accurate clothes and made in a bar shirt as souvenirs. The French ambassador to Nigeria, Jerome Pasquier, says Abia State is one of the best states in Nigeria conducive for foreign investment and solicited the cooperation of the state governor to make the partnership a huge success. Uh, we have also possibilities of work in uh, education because education is important. And why not to join education and agriculture? Probably that's the best domain in which we can, we can work together. Cassava shortage looms as price of gari increases in the local market. Meanwhile, from the global market, we see oil prices remaining solid in the $70 band. Let's see how commodities are faring this Friday. Finally, let's see how the Naira is faring against other currencies. That wraps this edition of Business Express. Remember to keep in touch with us by sending your comments, observations, and suggestions. Also be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTA's channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter and the handle is NTA News Now and the hashtag is BizX. Business Express returns Monday at 3 p.m. Be safe out there.